by clicking the Alt plus F2 button, you can arrange your various window layout like this. This is our level view and this is our 3D view. We will proceed with modeling with both view so as to see the object as we insert them. So far we have seen both the vertical and the horizontal envelope. Let's see how to model a curved vertical envelope. Straightforward working method. A first click to set the first point. A second click for the second point and a third to define the wall curvature. As for the vertical bending envelope, you can define a variable thickness, assign a thicker base or a scarp wall configuration. Modify the material layer, which is the same as the vertical envelopes, as well as all other properties. Let's now look at the curtain wall, modeled as always with two simple clicks. Starting and ending point, the curtain wall models are the same as doors seen for the windows. A click on the three dotted button allows us to choose the type we need from the extensive beam object library. Let's select this model here and config. So we will delete this and see how to deal with the curved curtain wall. A first click set the starting point, a second for the final point and the third click to set its curvature. Again we will access the beam library to select the type of model that we need for our project. These are just few of the objects available. But now let's have a look at the stairs entity and its dedicated modeling editor. We will select the stairs object from the drawing menu and click to insert it into the desired position. At this stage, a separate modeling environment opens known as the stairs editor. We have a 2D plan view editor on the left and a typical 3D view on the right. The stairs object menu provides specific stair related entities such as the ramp, the carpet ramp, the landing, the window stairs and the spiral ramp. As you can see, we have everything that we need to model our staircase. Let's start off with the simple ramp. A first mouse click set the stairs object in position, but at this point, let me explain a very useful feature that allows us to insert an object at a predetermined distance from a reference point. We simply hold down the A key, do a left mouse button click, then release the A key, move the mouse cursor in the desired direction and type in the wanted measurement to position the object with a maximum precision. Then we will draw another ramp and use the F5 and F6 keys to change the alignment or use the F7 and F8 to rotate the ramp here. Let's draw the landing now. Open the object menu and model the landing by clicking on edit button. An easy to manage section where we simply adapt the shape to the surrounding element just as if they were polylines. In fact, we will change its length, insert a node to the side, change the position and add a new point. And as we seen on the right, when I join the landing to the ramp, the software will also recognize the correct dimension. We want a new landing, just insert it here and for this, we also click the edit key and the insert the intermediate nodes that help us to model the object footprint. This will allow us to have the ramp in the correct position again. Having a look at the staircase design result directly in 3D view, we can notice that the windows intersect the stairs. So we should delete it. So select it and press delete key. We remove all the entities except the stairs object from the current visibility. To complete the staircase object, all we need now is a railing. On the right, we have all the properties. Clicking on the model, we can choose the type of railing that we prefer. We can see that the library contains various models. Let's select this model here and confirm. We can notice that the snap nodes are activated in 3D view. This allows us to model the railing object directly from this view. For the railing, 
you can insert intermediate poles and easily adapt their position by moving them. Right click and insert the pole. Now let's unhide everything and select View Hole from the Visibility menu. Then continue with our design. Let's go back to the ground floor level. I now need to insert a balcony object with the railings. For modeling our balconies, we can use the balcony slab object. The modeling process is identical to an ordinary floor slab object and modeling by positioning vertex node. The snap node helps us to align its geometry with the surrounding objects, while the previously seen A key plus click allow us to set nodes at the precise distance and in any direction as we can see here. So, I will hold down A key, left click, release the A key and then type in the desired measurement. Completed this step, we have now defined the balcony that can obviously be completed with a railing. We will choose the same model as before by selecting it from the object library. Then use the snap node in 3D view and once inserted correctly, click on finish. As you can see, the railing has a single span on each side. So, by pressing the insert key, we can subdivide it into multiple sections, which are separate by this pole. Here, we will divide it into two sections and continue to subdivide this other section too. As you can see, we have evenly distributed the pole along the entire railing entity. The railing entity also has other settings such as the initial offset that will allow us to move the starting pole according to the value specified here and the same applies to the end pole too. The lateral offset, let's say 20 cm or minus 20 cm, as we can see, moves the entire railing polyline inwards or outwards accordingly. Same for the height parameter that allows us to set a given height, for example 30 cm above or below, or like in this case, we will simply leave it at zero. Now let's go back to our level and insert the room entities. The room entity or compartment are very useful for determining surface, volumes, perimeters, the lighting ratios for each internal environment. We simply select the room entity, click inside the defined space surrounded by the walls, doors and windows and notice how the contained surface is automatically recognized. We can also define a room name even before inserting it. This here will be my bathroom. Clicking inside each environment, we can change its name directly from the property toolbox. Or a double click to type in the name directly. Let's finish off inserting the other rooms. The hallway, we will copy and paste it here. We can also modify the name of this room or make a multiple selection to edit them all at the same time. 